Hello there. We've got some work to do. Tis the season in which I have bitten off way more than I can chew. And I welcome chaos into my life. <laughs> Since I'm not entirely sure what to do with this channel, what I want to do, uh, period. <laughs> Since I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with this channel, I thought, hey, bring you along. Maybe it'll be interesting. I've decided to simultaneously start a bunch of projects. Uh, I pretty much always have a bunch of projects going. Whether or not I finish them is an entirely different story, but these projects are specifically for people for the holidays, and um, I thought I could document them here. The primary project that I'm working on is that I am going to be effectively reconstructing a cookbook. It's going to be a gift for my partner's mother, who collects cookbooks. This is a culmination of a late grandmother's recipes. Uh, ones she got from friends, family alike. Big old collection of recipes in a binder. Um, it's questionably organized. We're not going to talk about that. I just think it could be done better. Um, so I'm going to do it better. I'm grateful for the time put into this original collection, um, but I would like to transform it into a bit of a work of art, a bit of a, a wholesome keepsake, and so hopefully I'll be able to do that. I've never worked with leather before, but that's not stopping me, apparently, because the goal is effectively to find a book and and design a uh, meaningful cover for it and then um, put that together. Uh, like I said, I've never worked with leather before. I have never, I've, I technically learned one time how to bind a book, but I'm not going to bind it traditionally uh, because I had an idea and I'm rolling with it. <laughs> but basically this is going to be the process of me figuring out how to do any of this. Uh, it's going to be a little chaotic and maybe a little bit fun. I think it'll be fun. I'm excited. So... The first thing I've decided to do is to reorganize the table of contents. It'll give me an idea of how many recipes there are, along with like just what sort of recipes and what kind of organization the book will have. Um, I think I counted like 100, 116 recipes, which is a lot. This is a grandmother's recipe book, so there is a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that is older. There's a handful of jello recipes and that sort of stuff that 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 gives the vibe of, of cooking in the 50s. The next step is going to be translating the recipes into the document. Translating the recipes into the document and organizing them and making them more um, straightforward and like it's not illegible. The original cookbook isn't built like you're used like you, you expect a cookbook to be built. So I'm I'm just trying to make it more like a cookbook. I'm a bit bothered right now because I'm going through the breakfast recipes and rewriting them. And in the book, in the in the original book under breakfast, there's an apple pancake recipe. One word, pancake recipe under breakfast. So immediate thought is it's pancakes. Like 
you know, pancakes made with apples. That sounds delicious, right? So I organize it in the table of contents as breakfast. As I was writing the recipe out, I realized it was using like sliced apples and it says to, to put to put it in the oven. And that was when I realized it might not be pancakes like I know pancakes, but a pan hyphen cake made in a pan in the oven, baked in the oven. So then I had to go through the questioning of whether or not you put that in the breakfast recipe or under cakes and pies. So I think I'm going to put it under cakes and pies, but that unsettled me because <laughs> it's definitely not. It, I'm sure it, I'm sure it could be eaten for breakfast, but that's definitely not a pancake. Like, as you know, a breakfast pancake. It's definitely not a pancake. It's a cake made in a pan. Is there a difference? I feel like a fool. Are you supposed to eat it for breakfast? I feel like a fool. Okay, so for reference, this is what some of the original organization was like. There are several things that I don't like about it, and it's very frustrating to me. As from just like a viewing, reading standpoint, it's kind of difficult to read. There's just these giant blocks of text. There's some really small things that kind of bother me, and then there's some really like actually quite big things that bother me with this. For some reason, it took me until editing this video to notice this, but one of the more obvious and if not most bothersome things about this table of contents is also such a simple thing. And that's the fact that there is one column on the first page with a centered title and then two columns on the second page. It's just weird and it's wrong and I would like some consistency, please. One of the really small things is like, I don't like how instead of just putting, for instance, the four types of coleslaw, instead of just listing the individual recipes as different types of coleslaw, it says coleslaw four types. Same thing with like salad bean, bean salad, res two recipes. I would like to note that the quiche Lorraine written here says two recipes and there aren't actually two recipes in there. So it gets kind of really intense when we get over to the desserts, this is really where you can tell that it's that it's done alphabetically. When you're organizing food alphabetically, it really just sends things like all over the place. So you'll have cakes just randomly, cookies randomly, everything random in terms of type of food because you're not organizing it by type of food, you're organizing it by alphabetically. So to get around this, the person who made this put the, the type of food before the start of the name. So, cake, carrot. My least favorite, cake, devil's food. Who says that? It's devil's food cake. Like I, crisp boysenberry, like I, this book doesn't deserve the amount of wrath that I've given it, but this is why I'm, this is why I'm doing this. Cause I know that it can be done better. I know that a better thing to do is to just organize by related things. It looks better, it feels better to read, and also to divide into subsections. I'll show you the way that I organize my subsections. So I have a subsection for cakes, pies, cobblers, and crisps because in my head those all associate, those all go together so then I can have this giant chunk of things shortened to like, okay, well, I want a pie, I want a crisp, I want something like that for dessert, have cakes, pies, cobblers, and crisps. I moved all the cookies, bars, and fudges over into one section. So now we have all the cookies together. 
And like, I put together cookies that like kind of make sense. And like, I put all the fudge together. I put the bars together. I put the cookies all together. So it has, it's kind of chaotic in the sense that it doesn't have a super streamlined organization like alphabetical organization, but it has the organization of like feeling that you need in a cookbook. And now I can see all the different coleslaw options. I don't like coleslaw, so I'm not going to be eating it. But if someone wanted different types of coleslaw options, now you can see from looking at the contents, not having to go into the book, like, oh, let's just have basic coleslaw tonight. I've had these complaints with the rendition of this collection, like collecting of recipes since I first saw it. It really breaks my heart because it's it's a collection of someone's recipes over their adult life. It came in, it was in like a recipe box on cards and stuff like that. And so it's just like, I'm doing this because I think it deserves better presentation and representation of who this person might have been and um, the amount of things that they baked and cooked and shared with their family and that people grew up eating and loved and recipes shared with family and friends. So I'm doing something about it. I appreciate this original work. I appreciate this being all put in one place so I have the opportunity to do this and have something to work off of, but uh, it needs work. <laughs> I am realizing though that I have a lot of work ahead of me. I, I have a lot more work than I considered and we haven't even gotten to the book binding process yet. <laughs> The second project that I'm going to be working on periodically uh, is a cross stitch for my sister. It's a project I started a couple of months ago. I've been working on it on and off. I usually work on cross stitches when I'm like catching up on shows or uh, watching movies or catching up on YouTube videos and that sort of thing. And it, I usually go by whether or not I feel like working on it, but I kind of need to get some crotch stitches done before the holidays. So this is one of the projects. Uh, I would highlight the process a bit more if it was like I was creating my own pattern, but I'm not. I bought the pattern from Mama Witch Cross Stitch on Etsy, and I'm gonna link their shop down in the description. I'm not like affiliated with them or anything. I just really like their patterns. They hit all the right buttons for me, all the like witchy cottage core-y goblin-esque like stuff that I really like. The way that they build their patterns for sale are is very comprehensible. This is currently the project that I'm working on. It's a little mushroom fella and it's gonna have a order of plants and flowers. I've like gotten a good way through. Uh, I'm not sure how much more there is to do, but in terms of like if I'm like halfway through or less, it's an eight inch project with an, a nine inch hoop to make making the border a bit easier. I just wanted to show where I currently am with the project. My cat gave me a pretty gnarly scratch while she was trying to play with me last night. I've got this big old bundle of band-aids on my finger, but we're gonna we're gonna try and make do. A bit over a week, maybe a week and a half since I started workshopping the cookbook ideas. I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. I think I didn't realize how much work was going to be needed to like translate the recipes to make them more cohesive and just kind of easier to read in terms of like steps and organization and there's a lot of recipes i counted up 116 recipes and i'm not even 
I, I just finished one, like I just finished the breakfast recipes. So I, I think I kind of need like a day to just sit down and, and like not do anything but the recipes, but it's boring. It's tedious. I have also at the same time been trying to figure out a lot of the little bitty format stuff like um, the paper size, the margin sizes, like how I want it to look on the page. Um, I think I finally found a way that I like, uh, so I probably will stop fidgeting with that sort of stuff, but I just, it's been very tedious and very, uh, sort of defeating i've been the i've felt kind of deflated and my energy towards the project shot and i don't want it to be so in hopes in hopes of reigniting or like reining in just like the sheer amount of dread i started feeling in having to organize this cookbook uh, I think I'm gonna try and focus a little bit more on the actual book formatting side of things because our book finding book making side of things because that's something I'm very excited about so I think I'm gonna pivot a little bit if I can kind of push my focus towards the more creative side of it, the designing of the book, I think that'll kind of keep my energy for the project going and my excitement for it going because I really want to see, I want to see this through and I, I have lots of ideas and I want to put them on paper and share them. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, it's funny because it's only been like a week and but just like the sheer amount of like dread that this is developed. The next step is going to be sketching out some thumbnails to figure out what the cover design is going to look like. So this was the original design I had in mind. Uh, it would be more like they were the butterflies were like flying or something like that. But I am actually sort of falling in love with this sort of silhouette I've created of like stacked butterflies. I think I like the middle one the best because it kind of just has this emphasis on the blue morpho butterfly. I think I'm going to try and develop this thumbnail just a little bit more. I didn't get to meet Ruth before she passed. I've been told she probably would have liked me. Other than that though, I don't know too much. But the very first thing I did learn about her was that she loved butterflies. Apparently she had this set of decorative plates of three butterflies. A monarch, a swallowtail, and from what I can tell, a blue morpho? Maybe? In our hallway right now, there's a cross-stitch set done of those three butterflies that my partner's mom, Cinder, had gifted her. So I thought it would be a nice idea to have all three of these butterflies tying together all three of these items. My partner emphasized, though, that the blue butterfly is the one that feels most like her, so I wanted that to be a central feature of the design. Okay, so definitely not exactly proportionate, but I am falling in love with this sort of look. I think I'll definitely need to work on uh, making sure it's, it is proportional, making sure that I watch the sizes and that sort of thing, but I'm liking, I'm liking where this is going.
I'm pretty sure that one of Cinder's favorite flowers is lilacs. If I'm wrong, I feel quite silly, but I wanted to tie those into the design. There's a bunch of little things that I ended up incorporating into the final design that I just kind of feel proud of. They're really subtle, but they bring me so much joy. Okay, so I kind of got entranced by doodling, and I've got all sorts of plants and stuff involved in the design now. Um, oops. There's a lot of just kind of squiggles in it right now, but I like how intricate it has turned out. So, this feels nice. Hello. It is getting very late, um, and the household is asleep, um, but I am not. <laughs> I want to do a bit more stitching, and, um, and I'd like to have a nice cup of tea before bed. I'm going to steal your gender. I'm going to start working on the leather now. Do I know how to do this? Not at all. Um, here we go. Before the actual leather came into play, I started with paper. <laughs> paper stencils, to be specific. I started with the page size and then a slightly different page size because I didn't like the first page size. And then I used that to figure out the cover size and then the border design. After an hour or so, I had four different shapes of paper and three different shapes of paper that I was actually going to use. I'm pretty sure that I don't have enough leather here to complete this book, so I'm probably going to have to go and buy out some more leather. It's my old box cutter. I definitely didn't have the right tools for this, but I mostly just didn't have a sharp knife. <laughs> I switched between not sharp knives because I thought it wasn't working, but it was really just my fault. One flap done. I had to go over every single cut several times and it wasn't great, but I got somewhere and then I kept doing it. <laughs> Two flaps. I never actually looked for a way to make the edges of the leather look any cleaner, so they sort of end up looking haphazardly cut. If I did this again, I would definitely change that. I tried to clean them up a little bit, but they definitely don't look like a finished leather project. 
my sincerest apologies to anyone watching who actually knows what I'm supposed to be doing. made a frog. I'm so excited because I'm almost done. All I have to do now, I'm pretty sure, is all the little backstitch linings. It's like these are supposed to be fireflies, so they're supposed to have little antenna. I'm so close to being done! <laughs> I decided to use leather craft glue to attach the border to the cover piece. I tried to use pieces of paper to get an accurate glue placing and not make a mess, but it kind of just made a mess, so I quickly gave up on that. While the paste dried flat, I decided to spend the time scaling up the reference drawing of the design that I made. In the first sketch, I just had some nondescript curvy lines around the monarch butterfly, but I decided to replace those with some rosemary and some thyme. Definitely some of my favorite herbs to cook with, but they're also heavily associated with healing and protection. And specifically, thyme is a representation of courage, and rosemary is a representation of remembrance, which I found fitting in the face of honoring someone lost to us. After the glue dried enough, it came time to burn things. I transferred over the basic shapes of the outline by cutting lines with my X-Acto knife. I came to regret this because whenever I burned around those cuts, you'll be able to see that the edges sort of flare up compared to the rest of the surface. I ended up figuring out that I could use my mechanical pencil tip without any graphite to etch out my sketch onto the leather. Probably not the best technique, but it was definitely better than the knife lines.
Washing a cross stitch isn't necessarily required, but it's recommended for its longevity. Any oils or dirt that could have transferred from your fingers to the thread while stitching can actually alter the color and tones of the thread and turn brown over time. I start by rinsing with cool water, then moving to a lukewarm water with a bit of soap. I saturate the fabric and gently swish it around and then let it sit in the water for about 15 minutes. I lay it out and pat it to dry on a towel and giving it a roll and a gentle squeeze goes a long way. After giving it a final pat with a dry towel, I found an out of the way spot to lay it out to dry. I had to go out and buy another piece of leather, but they didn't have the same color, so I went for a darker one. Apparently, it was really difficult for me to get usable footage for this, but it's time to make this fine. I chose to use a simple seam to connect the cover, so I started by punching some holes. I decided that I would sew it on and then cut it. Um, why? I don't know. To match the spine, I'm making a backing for the clasps to go on on the front cover and the straps out of the same leather. Definitely a design choice, not just because I didn't have enough of the other leather, definitely 100% a design choice. Hello, um, welcome to my bedroom floor with my Minecraft B-Rug that you can't really see. Um, this is a bit of an awkward position to be in, but there's a couple of things we gotta do that I don't really have room for on my desk. So, here we are. One of the first things we need to do on the ground is I'm going to put rivets I put little cute little rivets on the book cover. So bear with this awkward, uncomfortable angle whilst I use this hammer. Mallet. It's a mallet. It's not a hammer. Whilst I use this mallet to cause harm <laughs> to this book. Okay. <laughs> Let's, let's get started. Let's hope it looks okay. Here we go. Look, look, I, I can explain. I can explain. I know what this looks like. I, I know the mallet's upside down. I just, it just... It just worked better sometimes, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just 
Something subtle. I don't actually know if if this tool is meant for like punching holes so that you can sew things into things. That's what I'm using it for. Holes. Now I can actually kind of show you the way that I intend on binding this. I have these sets of binder rings. I have two of these. I don't have the paper yet. That'll be the next thing that we do. We've got hardware. Now I'm realizing that I might have made the spine way too wide. I definitely made the spine too wide. But yeah, only thing left to do for the cover is to sew on the buckle straps. The other thing that needs to be done on the ground. I have this very nice paper, but it's very much the wrong size. I have this deckled edge ruler that I'm going to attempt to use to tear the paper to size. I ended up changing the paper size from the original dimensions because it just looked so small compared to the size of the covers and how they turned out. And then I tore paper for an agonizingly long hour and a half. I have some regrets. The last piece. That's the work, the work. If you don't know, finishing a cross stitch is the worst part. No, no, I'm I'm kidding, not really. It it can definitely be frustrating though. But the act of finishing a cross stitch is just covering up the back so you don't have to look at all the beautiful chaos. There are lots of very nice and clean ways to finish a cross stitch. I did none of those and just cut off the edges and used glue. I got very frustrated. It, it wasn't my proudest moment. But at last it is complete. Sadly, I didn't get any footage with natural lighting because it was so late into the night right before I was giving it away to my sister. But she thought it was really cool, and I'm really happy that I made it for her. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do with this paper is um, hole punch it. So I realized that I don't have a hole puncher um, because hole punching paper is a bit of a lost art. So I went out and I bought a single hole puncher punching holes in paper. Now I get to punch holes in like 24 pieces of paper. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. <laughs> I'm gonna measure out, I'm gonna try and measure out uh, where to put these holes. I'll say it now, I did it very, very wrong. I, a silly goose, forgot to place the holes in relation to the book bind and not just the paper size. But hey, let's watch me think I know what I'm doing, blissfully unaware of the approaching disappointment. And this was the moment I finally realized my mistake. Ah! I'm an idiot! I needed to measure the- uh, I can't believe I didn't think about that at all. Yeah, so that was miserable. Moving on. Okay. 
I ended up having to adjust the size of the gaps in the binding to accommodate to the holes in the paper that I had already made. with this execution. Please note that if you're doing anything with any sort of knife, make sure it's sharp. Cause unlike me, you should use a sharp knife. It'll work better. It's a book. I did it. It's a book. It's a book and I did it. It's a book and I made it. It's a book and it opens and everything. Ta -da. <laughs> it's this is good. I'm a moth. By the end of this, I was, I was extremely ready to be done. I was beyond ready to be done. The frustrations with the paper and then the disappointment that I wasn't going to be gifting an actually completed cookbook because I never finished typing up all of the recipes definitely overshadowed any sense of accomplishment that I had gained for quite a while. But aside from that, I got pretty damn close, and I'm actually really happy with my attempt. It was challenging, and there were plenty of things that I would go back and do differently, or that I would that I know better now, and so I would improve. And I talked about a couple of those things already, but I'm proud of where I got to, especially for a first attempt of doing anything like this. I'm definitely sad that the innards, the guts of the book, the guts, aren't done, but we can come back to that in the future, and I feel like that would be something fun to come back to. And it'll be nice to dedicate more time and energy and personality towards this that important part of the book. So yeah, maybe we'll see more in the future. I hope we see more in the future. I would like to get to that at some point. <laughs> this video is going up way, way, way later than I hoped it would. It took me about two months to get as far as I did. Two months? Really? Yeah, no, two months. And then I got so sick, <laughs> but it's done. Well, it's somewhat done and it was gifted and she loved it. Uh, it was great. As challenging and frustrating as a lot of 
parts of this war. It was very fun. I was very happy to to have the creative energy to do this and develop it. And I'm glad that I got it as far as I did and I tried. If you did get this far into the video, um, thank you. Would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> that was painful. Hi, thanks. <laughs> thank you for making it this far. I'm hoping to get up to some more project shenanigans in the future. I have a lot of plans, uh, or at least I have a lot of thoughts that I'm gonna try and make into plans. So if you did enjoy your time here, um, hit subscribe so that way you can see what's to come. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye. Emotional support water bottle. Some of you need to wash your emotional support water bottle. Oh, I just, I just realized I never introduced myself. Hi. Oh, well, <laughs> it's not gonna happen yet.